Welcome to this week's Ask Charlie. We've got two little dogs asleep here on the sofa. It is going to be wet and miserable all day, so I thought I'd take this opportunity to sit down and chat to you, and I hope that you're not distracted by the raindrops on the garden room roof up there. It's just, it's pretty miserable. So I've got a mug of something warm and some more of my favorite cookery books. You guys loved my last video and I had lots of people saying, Charlie, can you do a part two? So here is part two. I thought I'd take this opportunity on a wet, miserable day to sit down and go through um, these books with you and why they're special to me and favorite recipes in there because from my last video when I did part one, which I will make sure is linked uh, uh, here in the description of this video, Various people said, Charlie, can you tell us your favourite recipes from the books as well? So I'm going to endeavour to do that as best I can. So this one is a very, very special book to me. It was actually a present from my husband and it's Mrs. Beaton Everyday Cookery. And Simon gave this to me on our wedding anniversary and he's written in it to Charlie on our wedding anniversary 102 years later. Much love, Simon. And he's dated it the 19th of May, 2019. And the message above says, to Mr. and Mrs. E.R. Pierce on the occasion of their wedding from Mr. and Mrs. Dixon with the best wishes for their future health and happiness, October the 13th, 1917. And I think it's so lovely to write in a book and the history of, of it. And, and I think, you know, this was a wedding present to the Pierces from the Dixons and this is an anniversary present from my husband to me and I just think it's lovely you probably all know I'm an old-fashioned girl and so just looking through these recipes is is lovely and I don't know it just it's, it has nostalgia and comfort and all sorts of things and and, and I just Mrs Beaton was just so wonderful wasn't she um, she talks through cooking utensils, she talks through, you know, trussing up a bird, she talks through all sorts of fascinating things. And I love the history of food and cookery and how things used to be done. I've just opened it to a page, banana frittatas, banana pudding, fried bananas, banana trifle. Just brilliant, brilliant barley water for invalids. Um, two ounces of pearl barley, one to two lumps of sugar, um, a thinly paired rind of half a small lemon, one pint of boiling water, cover the barley with cold water, boil for two minutes and strain, place the barley, sugar and lemon rind in a jug, pour over the boiling water and cover closely. When cold, strain and use. This forms a nutritious, agreeable drink and is also largely used to dilute milk thus making it easier to digest. So there you are, <laughs> barley water for invalids. I just love that she'll also have, you know, recipes on a budget. Uh, beans, French method for cooking, vegetarian dish. It's just fascinating. And if, you know, there's Bernays sauce. So if I'm, you know, looking at how things used to be done, I will use this book as reference and I just find it utterly fascinating. One of my... Um, things that I love to do is to go up, have a bath, take a cookery book upstairs with me, get into bed before Simon and just have time to flick through. Or he might be reading the newspaper, which he often does in bed, and I might be flicking through a cookery book and getting ideas and inspiration. And so this is a favourite that will I will treasure forever. Then... We have foraging with kids. Now, my mother was wonderful when we were children, taking us for walks and pointing out plants and things that were growing seasonally and in the hedgerows and, you know, different trees and things like that. And it's something that she did with my children as well, which is really lovely. And this book is just perfectly put together. It's superb. I love it. 52 wild and free edibles to enjoy with your children. And I just love the way it is laid out. Um, I've just opened it at a uh, wild garlic recipe and it shows you a picture what to look for it talks about the different names it talks about where you can find them it talks about um, you know the plants 
in um, yeah, three cornered leek or three cornered garlic. And there's recipes with it as well. I have earmarked this page, which is dandelions. And it talks about the benefits of dandelions, when to find them, what to look for. There's a couple of recipes with it. And it's just a really, really lovely book. And actually, I would, I would say it's great for adults, not just children, if you want to learn more. It's just a really carefully put together, thoughtful book with lovely illustrations and full of lots of ideas. There's a bit on mushrooms there. So a really super book, which I often find myself referring to. Then whizzing across to the other side of the world, Australians Women Women's Weekly. They have, um, I think I first came across them about 25 years ago, maybe even longer in the library. And they have wonderful recipes. They used to be in like magazine format. But th these are a series of books which I've got. And I've just, uh, this book makes my mouth water. It's full of all sorts of things. And actually it's one that the children will often say, oh, mum, can you cook that for us? That looks lovely. Tomato, mozzarella and chickpea pan bake. Delicious. Absolutely delicious. Really fresh, really gorgeous. A lovely, lovely recipe. Um, basic potato mash, mustard and cheddar mash, kale mash, olive oil and sage mash. Just some really, really lovely ideas. Um, chicken with pancetta and white beans. Scrumptious. Really great recipes. I love the Australian Women's Weekly um, collection of, of books. And something very, very different. The Poacher's Cookbook by Prue Coates. This is over 150 recipes for feather, fur and fish, sauces, puddings, drinks and preserves. Now, Prue was a dear friend of my husband's. She's a wonderful, wonderful lady, um, fascinating. She has so many incredible stories. She died a few years ago, but I have um, all of her cookery books, actually. And this one says, Charlie and Simon with fondest love, Prue. And I have just marked her um, haunch of venison recipe, which is really, really delicious. But again, there's fish recipes, there's, you know, <laughs> uh, pigeon, duck, um, all sorts of things in here. Um, wild damson duck, um, duck with orange, traditional grouse, all sorts. Um, and yeah, a really, really fascinating book. And if, I don't know, somebody, gives us something or Simon comes back with something and I'm not sure what to do with it or how to cook it, then Prue, um, Prue's books are absolutely brilliant for that. Her husband was um, a real countryman and was always bringing her home things to cook that he had caught or shot or whatever. Then Leon's Happy Salads. And this, again, makes my mouth water. Lots of, I have to just flick it open at black riced peas, but um, there's a spinach and chickpea salad, which is delicious. Lovely fig and pomegranate salad. Look at the colours in there. And um, yeah, full of lots of lots of different great salad ideas. So, you know, salads can get really boring. Lettuce, tomato, cucumber. That is going to change all of all of that um, and, and give you lots of ideas and inspiration for lovely salads. Then two of my most treasured, most battered cookery books that I will never, ever part with. Birthday Cakes for Kids. And I'm going to insert some pictures of cakes that I have created from this book over the years. But the children, when they were little, would flick through this book and say, Mama, could you make us that, please? And that, <laughs> I made countless green tractor cakes. And actually, we had a wonderful nanny, Rachel, who asked me to make a cake for her little boy's, um, I think, first or second birthday. I loved making cakes. This I created for Coco's first birthday. It was a labour of love and I don't know how the blue and how I did it looking back because I was heavily, heavily pregnant with Gus and well, like seven months pregnant with him and had a toddler. Yet I still managed to create 
one of those cakes. Oh, and we were, we were rebuilding this house and living in a rental house while I was running this project. I don't know how I did it. The children did go to bed at like 6.45, so I think I started making it once I got to bed over a few evenings. And then um, a fairy tale castle, and I made a knight's castle and all sorts of things. And I used to spend hours, literally hours, making their birthday cakes. Um, I made a few pixie toadstools as well. And I just, I loved it. I loved the challenge and I loved um, creating wonderful cakes for them that I would hide away and that it would be a surprise on their birthday. And then my last book that I'm going to share with you um, in this part two is Annabelle Carmel. Now, I weaned my children on Annabelle Carmel's books. And again, with not only with their birthday cakes, but with their birthday parties, I got quite carried away. And I found inspiration in here for jelly boats and that's where the idea of jelly boats came from and also I don't know if I've got a picture but I'll insert one on um I'll insert one in here if I can find it of um how I would did some things for Gus's birthday I think it was one of Gus's birthdays but um I just yeah Annabelle has brilliant brilliant ideas and is great at getting um, good nutritious food into children and she's got many other books since um, my children were tiny but these are a few of my favourite and I really hope that you have enjoyed uh, part two of my favourite cookery books and it's given you some ideas and some inspiration. I wanted to do like a wide selection that hopefully there'd be something for everybody in here that you could um, you know take something away from from this video but anyway thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you at the end of the week with this week's vlog. <laughs>